Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's the top delinquent, chapter 59, and this one's titled, <laughs> titled, Whoops, It's a Showdown. Hey, you greeted Eda as you met on the corner near your block the next morning. How'd it go with talking with the psychologist and whoever else it is that you needed to speak with about Mum and Mrs. Craig slash Auntie Jane slash Principal? You then paused. God, she's got too many names. It went very well. He replied with a smile as he fell in step with you. I am hoping that we will have a chance to talk to Principal Craig today to let her know that with her permission your mother will be notified of her whereabouts and should your mother approve the visitation she will be allowed to make contact. Hmm, you hummed. Okay, so we've got to ask Mrs Craig if it's okay that her sister knows that she's around. You pointed your hand from left to right and then her sister has to say that she wants to see her again. You pointed from right to left. Yes, Ida nodded. Man, so many formalities, he said, throwing hands up. But I get it, my mum might not want to see her. I hope she does, though. It'll be good for the two of them. Eda nodded, his agreement, and you both entered the school grounds, making your way towards the main building. A uh, rep, a male member of the school council, greeted Eda as he made his way over to the two of you, bowing politely. Uh, Principal Craig asked for me to escort you and Miss Yin to the office once you arrived here. She said it was an urgent matter. You and Ida looked at each other before Ida turned his head back to his underclassman and addressed him. Thank you, Kohei. Please take us there, he said, falling in behind his younger club member. Well, this is good timing, you whispered to him as you walked. We can talk to Mrs. Craig about the, um, thing regarding that visit. Yes, it will be a good meeting, although I'm curious as to the reason for Principal Craig calling on us so early in the morning. Yeah, who knows, he replied with a shrug. You all reached the office and Ida thanked the underclassman and entered. Please take a seat, you two, the receptionist said in a stern voice as she scowled over her glasses at the two of you. Mrs Craig will attend to you in a moment. Attend? What the heck? You thought as you sat down, giving the receptionist a dirty look. You allowed the dirty look to stay on your face long enough to show the receptionist your displeasure at her words, but then relaxed as Ida reached across for your hand. It will be okay. He reassured you, having seen your reaction to the receptionist's words. You gave him a small smile, then sat back, waiting for your principal slash auntie to call you in. A few moments later, she opened her door and called you both forwards, her lips pressed into a thin line of disapproval. Hey, you greeted her once she'd closed the door to you all. What's up? Please take a seat, she said stiffly. You sat down but watched as she walked around behind her desk and stood, she seemed to be a little annoyed about something, but you had no idea what it could be. Were the two of you at the local Seiyu store in the evening after school yesterday? She asked pointedly. Yeah, you replied, scrunching your eyebrows together. Why? I've had a complaint from someone that you and a male, I'm assuming, Ida, were causing an uproar in the store. The hell? Language, Yin? Both Principal Craig and Ida chided you. No, seriously, what the hell, you punctuated, immediately getting riled up. The report was that you were crashing into shelves, having uh, extramarital uh, doings in the aisle, and then making derogatory comments about a fellow customer, Principal Craig said in a very irked tone. Oh, please, you scoffed with annoyance. Do you seriously believe that BS? Yin... I'm going to have to give you a detention for your inappropriate language and for your behaviour outside of school. Your conduct has set a bad example for the other students and to the rest of our local community. We have certain values and principles that we uphold and I will not allow you to mar our reputation. And Ida, I will be taking your title of class representative. What? You snapped, jumping up. We don't even get to tell our side of the story? You'd believe some story of some frickin' Karen over us and then without even asking for an explanation, take Tenya's title? I don't think so. You can give me all the detentions you want. Expel me. Make an example of me. But don't you dare touch Tenya's title. Yin, please. Ida whispered, mortified. No. You looked at him and then you looked back to your auntie, but your comment was still being directed towards him as you stared her down. You've always protected me, Tenya. Now it's my turn to stand up for you. Mrs Craig stood silently, staring at this sudden protective side that you'd never shown before. All the times that she had threatened you with calling home, you had backed down. But you were different now. For your information, you spat vehemently, the trolley did crash into the shelves, but I placed all the items back in their rightful place. 
all undamaged, might I add. As for the extra marital activities, are you kidding me? You know that's false. Shame on you for even so much as entertaining the credibility of that accusation. And lastly, making derogatory comments about a fellow shopper. The term I used was avant-garde, which, when referring to fashion, means a forward-looking movement animated by innovative designers and artists who dare to go against the mainstream and propose ideas that stand out from the conventional, which I would hardly call a derogatory comment. So frick you chicken strips, if you're going to be such a prude, then throw me out of this school, I want nothing more to do with you. Mrs. Craig's eyes widened and welled with tears as you stood there, fists balled up and nostrils flaring. I rate that she was being like this. Tense silence reigned as everyone in the room remained stunned by your sudden flurry of words, voluntarily mute as he waited for her response. Suddenly, Edith stood up beside you and bowed his head towards the principal. Principal Craig, I take full responsibility for. Oh, shut up, Tenya. I take full responsibility for this. I was the one who hopped in the trolley. I was the one who said it didn't matter that we were in school clothing. I know the accusations against us are exaggerated and mostly untrue, but I won't let you be dragged into this. You snapped at him, then turned your attention back to the principal. Let Tenya go, right now, with his title, and then let's have you and I talk this out, huh? Oh damn, sis snapped. Oh gosh, stay tuned for chapter 60 tomorrow. I can't even speak after all that yelling. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow to see how it all ends up. I'll see you then.